So what's, uh, this part is about Jeffersonian democracy. So to fast forward, for a progressive, if we look back and say, okay, there's a Tea Party going on over there, which historical figure uh, from the period of the revolution uh, do I relate to? And most uh, progressive people are going to like Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson. Um, so Jeffersonian democracy on Wikipedia is a simple thing. In its core ideals, it is characterized by the following elements, which the Jeffersonians expressed in their speeches and legislation. And so uh, there were two basic uh, power structures at the time of the revolution after that. One is the Federalists, and um, then the other guys uh, were the Republicans. And the Republicans were, uh, Jefferson was a Republican, and Jeffersonian democracy is his particular uh, group uh, within the revolutionary movement's philosophy. Um, and they express this, the core, one, the core political value of America is representative democracy. Citizens have a civic duty to aid the state and resist corruption, especially monarchism and aristocracy. So according to Jefferson, we're already, it's time to resist the aristocracy. I think most conservatives and liberals uh, would agree. Uh, corruption stemming from this elite control of Washington, um, if I translate to modern terms. The yeoman farmer, which is basically the freeholder, the, the small uh, freeholder uh, who owns his own land and works it, uh, the Yeoman Farmer best exemplifies civic virtue and independence from corrupting city influences. Government policy should be for his benefit. Financiers, bankers, and industrialists make cities a cesspool of corruption should be avoided. <coughs> so, uh, how this speaks to me, um, the Yeoman Farmer uh, and civic virtue reminds me of sort of the ideal Roman as well. So it's sort of the American Roman. Uh, so let's leave it at that. Um, so for me that would now be the small businessman, because small businessman is like the yeoman farmer now. He, America had a duty to spread what Jefferson called the empire of liberty to the world. It should avoid entangling alliances. Uh, and Ron Paul has sort of talked about the entangling alliance part, and he is basically one to spread liberty through setting a good example. So I like his philosophy even better, but it's more apropos to the times, because we're living in, in a less, you know, medieval world. Um, the national government is a dangerous necessity to be instituted for the common benefit, protection, and security of the people, nation, or community. It should be watched closely and circ circumscribed in its powers. Most anti-federalists join the Jeffersonians. The wall of separation between church and state is the best method to keep religion free from intervention by the federal government, government free of religious disputes, and religion free from corruption by government. The federal government must not violate the rights of individuals. The Bill of Rights is a central theme. Um, the federal government must not violate the rights of states. The Kentucky and Virginia Resolutions of 1798, secretly written by Jefferson and James Madison, proclaim these principles. Freedom of speech of the press is the best method to prevent the tyranny of the people by their own government. The Federalist violation of this idea through the Alien and Sedition Acts of 1798 became a major issue. A standing army and navy are dangerous to liberty and should be avoided. Much better was to use economic coercion, such as the embargo. Very interesting. The United States Constitution was written in order to ensure the freedom of the people. A strict view of how the Constitution was written is kept. However, no society can make a perpetual Constitution or even a perpetual law. The earth belongs always to the living generation. All men have the right to be formed and thus to have a say in the government. Protection and expansion of human liberty was one of the chief goals of the Jeffersonians. They also reformed their respective state systems of education. They believed that their citizens had the right and should be educated no matter what their circumstance or status in life. So how does this all speak to us today? It's, it's saying that as we uh, develop historically over time with technology, liberty should be our most prized possession. And that uh, the individual who is not, um, uh, there's sort of this uh, ideal of somebody who supports himself through the fruits of their own labors. That's how we can extrapolate it to the present day, I suppose. 
Um, so what does that say to you? Um, does that get the message across for the framework? Does that speak to some bone in our body that we can uh, use in modernity? Um, and for me it's quite convenient uh, because this will drain a cesspool and, and restore the government to its job of preventing cesspools. And then it's up to me to eradicate poverty and I don't have the government getting in my way uh, to the extent that I can by creating businesses and uh, making sure we have equity in them uh, that allow them to sustain what is needful.